Hey, what's up? Here in the warehouse today, taking a break to talk about some Detroit Lions stuff. I just want to go over, so it, today is, is the second day of April, and I want to go over their roster after they signed C.J. Anderson yesterday, and we're going to go by, on, on offense at least, position by position, and I'm going to tell you my opinion, what I think they might do in the future, uh, and, and how it's going to work out next year. Anyway, so we'll start at uh, at wide receiver, Kenny Galladay. Um, obviously a solid, solid guy. Had a great year, made some great catches. Uh, he's going to stay there, Marvin Jones. Uh, we'll say there too. Uh, we signed Danny, Danny Amendola a little bit ago. Uh, he's old. He's 34 years old. My hope is that we're going to draft someone like Andy Isabella, for example. Um, on like day three, not not soon. And he'll show him how to be a shifty little white guy receiver. <laughs> like, you know, like Amendola or Wes Welker. Or uh, pretty much any of those guys on the Patriots who did well. Um... You know, for depth at wide receiver, we have Brandon Powell. We just signed Tommy Lee Lewis from the Saints. Uh, Chris Lacey, Andy Jones. Really, uh, you know, Deontes Alexander. None of these guys. I mean, we saw Powell a little bit in Andy Jones play last year. Some guys liked him a lot. I was not that impressed by either of those guys. They were just average receivers, you know, who were playing against not the best coverage because we were down by, like, three touchdowns. Uh, not the best. I think we're probably going to get a quick guy uh, in the draft on day two or on day three, not on day one or two. On day three, we'll, we'll, we'll get somebody who who fell down, uh, a best receiver on the board type guy, um, someone quick and someone small. Once we uh, we get past receiver, we've got the tight ends. We've got Jesse James, who we signed from Pittsburgh uh, as an unrestricted free agent. Michael Roberts, Jerome Cunningham, and Thomas Logan, who we got from Buffalo, who was the he was a quarterback in college. He's a kind of a tall, athletic guy, not a lot of experience playing tight end. Jesse James is going to be a decent pass catcher. Michael Roberts is kind of a bigger guy. Um, he had some great catches, but he, he's used more in blocking and blocking schemes for the Lions at least. Last year, the Lions ran the ball fifty-two percent of the time. Um, the, they passed at like 49.2, and so I guess if you don't count punts. I mean, but basically, they ran the ball more than they passed the ball, which was anomalous in last year's NFL season. So, with Matthew Stafford getting older, with uh, us investing more into our offensive line, with Carrion Johnson, and now with the C.J. Anderson signing, it's making me wonder, are we just going to say, you know what, passing is not our thing. Passing is, eh, it's okay. Um, are we going to focus on more like quick pulling guards and, and more bulkier tight ends. Are we going to draft a tight end in the draft? Who knows? That was a position we were really talking about a few months ago, but with, with Jesse James signing, maybe that's our tight end guy. Um, it's pretty obvious, I think, to most people, the Lions are going to go defense in the first round, either Ed Oliver, uh, Montez Sweat, or uh, Wilkins. Uh, all linemen, um, Sweat being an edge guy. Oliver being kind of a pass rushing defensive tackle, and Wilkins being a defensive tackle. We've got Snacks Harrison at nose tackle, so that position is is I mean between him and and, and Hand um, and Trey Flowers, our D line is going to look solid. But when there's not a lot of good players on offense, you know, between picks two to twenty five, um, you got to pick the best guy on the board. You just do, and a lot of people think that's going to be at Oliver. I am in that camp as well. Uh, but back on offense, though, so let's go through our offensive linemen because, we, you know, we need to talk about that. They're the, the foundation of your offense is the linemen. And so we've got uh, Taylor Decker. I like him a lot. He's a solid, solid player. He, I think he's probably our best lineman. He's from Ohio State. He's a young guy. He's 24, 25. I think he's 25. That's what he'll be during the season at least. Um, no complaints there. Frank Ragnow, again, there was a tough learning curve. Uh, initially, he had some rough games early on in the year, and that kind of makes him. Um, if you look at like his PFF score or whatever, it, it, it was artificially low because it was so bad in the first few weeks. Um, I don't pay for their like game by game breakdown, but I watched the games, and so uh, I, I feel pretty confident in saying that that he sucked in the beginning of the year because he's a rookie, you know, obviously. But as the season went on, he's 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 playing solid in that guard spot. Graham Glasgow at center. Again, these first three guys, they're all like 24. Well, Ragnow's 22. 
Uh, Glasgow's 25, and I think Decker's 24. Those three guys, solid. I hope they're with the team for a long time because that left side of the line is, I mean, it's the most important side of the line. And uh, as Stafford gets older and less mobile and as we're trying to run the ball more and do things with play action more, you, you have to have a strong left side. It's, that's just football 101. Everyone knows that. On the right side, we have Kenny Wiggins, Ricky Wagner, and Tyrell Crosby. Who uh, Tyrell Crosby, uh, I, I would say he has the most promise out of those three. And Ricky Wagner and Kenny Wiggins, like, thank you so much for being a Detroit Lion, but um, you didn't do very good last year, and, and you're getting up there in age. They're both 30, I think, which is not that old, but it's old for a football player. Um, I would really hope that the Lions look to upgrade their the, the, the right guard position. I mean, right guard or even right tackle, but probably right guard because um, we have Joe Dahl. Joe Dahl is like the backup left guard who plays tackle too. He's actually, he actually started at tackle at the beginning of the season last year. And, and as the season went through, he played more and more guard, and he's now a guard in the Lions uh, depth chart website. But you can see like when PFF grades him, they grade him out as a tackle. He's a big guy, plays both ways. I would be more comfortable with Joe Dahl playing tackle. He's, he's a young guy too. Um, and then drafting a, uh, a, a guard in the, in the draft because I think guard is going to be a position um, that kind of slips. And there's a guy from Boston College named uh, Chris Lindstrom. Let me see what it is. I looked it up. Uh, yeah, Chris Lindstrom, um, 6'3", 308, ran a 4'9". His three-cone was 7'6'1", so he's got good numbers. He's, a, he's, he's the kind of guy who could pull uh, and be a successful guard, you know, leading down for carry-on down the field. Um, he didn't pass block that much because Boston College ran kind of a weird offense. They did a lot of play action, which is good because I think that's where we're going, definitely as a team who wants to run the ball more and a team that over the next at least year or two is not going to have the best wide receiver core. Galladay's good, but I, I just don't see them putting up crazy numbers. Um, you know, he's going to be a guy who's going to fall to the second round probably, and the Lions up there on, you know, with the second-round pick if they go at Oliver, uh, Chris Lindstrom, not an exciting draft. I mean, Oliver is exciting, but Lindstrom is not exciting at guard in the second round. But that's the kind of stuff you have to do if you want to have a quarterback play till he's 36 or whatever you want Stafford to do. Those are the things you kind of do if you want to have a successful team. It starts with your interior linemen. Um, I mean, I guess that's arguable. But you can't have guys like Wiggins and Wagner. They were Band-Aids, really, for last year. We, we have to have a team. If we go into the 2020 season with four of our five starting linemen being, like, under 27 years old, that's a great place to be for the next three years after that. So, like, after Patricia signs the extension, after, you know, Bob Quinn has five years with the team, they can then start making what hopefully, you know, people talk about as, like, a, not a dynasty, but just – creating a, a sustainable and reliable team culture and that it starts with the guys who are in the shit with the linemen and you know the quarterbacks uh, to, a, to a lesser extent once we go uh, to quarterback again yeah Matt Stafford he'll be here for a while I'm not I don't think so if Stafford in my opinion if he has a bad year next year we got to start looking for a replacement we, we can't we can't keep saying oh he was great in 2014 he was great in 2015 um, we can't, we can't keep saying that, you know, it's 2019 now. We, you, you don't get wins for how good you were last year. Connor Cook backs him up. I don't think Connor Cook is our, is our future. He's a Michigan guy. He's from Michigan State. That's awesome. But, uh, you know, I would, I would like us to draft a quarterback. You know, who, who I like this year in the draft, uh, for, for a quarterback is Tyree Jackson out of Buffalo. He's like six seven. He's a huge guy. He's going to go on day three for sure because, does not have the best passing mechanics, but you can you can learn that stuff. Um, is he going to be a guy who's going to be around, who's going to take the star job for Matthew Stafford in three years? Maybe. Uh, that would be a strange scenario, but it's not not impossible. When we go to running back, we've got six, five guys in the roster because I, th I think Legarrette Blunt is no longer on the roster as of as of four two nineteen. Um, Carry on Johnson, Zach Zenner. Mark Thompson, Theo Riddick, and Kerwin Williams. And, and oh, we have six. Yeah, we have six now with uh, CJ Anderson. So out of those six, we're not going to keep more than four. Definitely not. If we do, I'm thinking Carry On, Theo, Zach Zenner, and CJ Anderson. Kerwin Williams is kind of a strange 
you know, to throw it in there because he could take Zenner's spot. But him and Zenner play such different football, and Zenner is so much more useful on special teams. Uh, and I just don't see Williams taking Theo Riddick's spot. If anything, Riddick might get moved to slot. He might get traded for a pick. Um, I mean, we saw Jordan Howard get get traded for a fifth round pick. So I'm not I'm not too excited about what we can get for Theo Riddick. Um, but like a sixth or a seventh would be that would be a godsend. Uh, we'd move a guy. I think he's got I don't know how much he has left on his contract, but it's he didn't just sign a deal last year. Um, and then at fullback, Nick Bodden. So could we go four fullback, four running backs, a fullback, four tight ends, and and six six uh, wide receivers? Well, four wide receivers and two slot guys. Yeah, we could. Is that gonna be a that's that's gonna be a weird Lions season because it's not gonna be an offense like any of us are familiar with. It's gonna be Stafford throws twenty two times a game for two hundred forty yards and two touchdowns, and then our 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 league of of running backs between them get forty five carries. Uh, am I excited for it? Absolutely, I'm excited for it. That's awesome. I want to see. I want to see what happens. Um, what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. Give me your Detroit Lions predictions. Tell me what you think they're gonna do in the draft in free agency still, because there is still some time. What do you think we're gonna see next year with the Detroit Lions? I am so excited about it. I love talking about football. I hope you do too.